This book is probably the most devastating, if not fucked up book I've ever read in my entire life. Hey everyone, how's it going? So today, for the purpose of this video, I just really want to talk about my feelings and thoughts about this book. It was probably the worst book, but the best book I've ever read. If you don't already follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you should. I recently finished A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. This book destroyed me completely. I don't think I've ever read anything so profound and so just depressing. It was just a journey that I don't wish upon anyone that I don't see myself going through again. But at the same time, I do. Heard only snatches here and there. Um, this wasn't a book I heard a lot about, but the things that I've heard about were really sad and depressing things. It was like, it's the saddest and depressing book you'll ever read in your entire life. And I was like, okay, it's on the back, back burner of my mind just because I don't really pick up literary fiction, contemporary fiction. And um, fun fact about this book, I actually found this, this hardcover edition for only $10 at a used bookstore in Washington. And I wasn't even looking for it. I just found it and I was, it was just like literally sitting on the lowest shelf. Another fun fact about this is that this book probably took me the longest time to finish and read. So I started this book in the summer that I found this, which was last year in 2019. And I read around 300 pages and I had to put it down. I think just because I was just so emotionally tired and mentally tired from reading this book, I just put it down and never really picked it up again until the beginning of this year. I read it and finished it in one night. It was insane. So if you guys didn't know what this book is about, it's basically the lives of four best friends from their college years up until their 50s. It takes place in New York City and it mainly goes about their relationships with each other, um, their dynamics with other relationships with other people. The whole story overall centers around one of the main characters. His name is Jude St. Francis and his past trauma and how his trauma affects his past life and, and his current life with his current relationship with the people um, surrounding him. It was honestly very heartbreaking, but at the same time, we'll, ta we'll go into that heartbreak just a little later. So overall, that's pretty much the gist of the story. Um, it's so detailed and so like heavy loaded with information and just lives uh, from the people in this book that I found it sometimes really hard to just really get past or through it in general. Like it was a lot of information and just character relationships. And I feel like if you're not the type of person who doesn't really like to read a character-driven, slow-paced sort of book, then this might not be for you because a lot of people, a lot of reviews that I've seen, um, a lot of people have been complaining about the length of this book and how certain parts need to be taken out. I think that because of the length and because of the things that I read, I grew more attached and I knew more about these characters and I sort of appreciated that. I never really found myself ever picking this book up, but here I am and I finished it. I even got a freaking tattoo because of this book. It was literally the most spontaneous thing I've ever done in my life. This book made me feel and just do things that I never thought I would feel or do. Again, if you guys don't follow me on Twitter or Instagram, I recently got four brand new tattoos. Um, three for the Starless Sea, which is a bee key and a sword. And I got a heart with three sunflowers, which symbolizes the four friends um, at its core in this book. So where to even begin with this book? It was just devastating in a way because of this one main character Jude like I said before and how his past trauma sort of affects his present day life and his relationships with other people it really goes to show I guess sort of how sometimes people don't think they deserve help it's also a different perspective of people wanting to help that other person but not understanding why um they're not taking it or why they don't think they deserve it. And I think those two spectrums are really interesting and from different perspectives to read from. This book is full of trigger warnings. The most trigger warnings I've ever read in, in a single book. I would not recommend this book to anyone who wants to feel like helpless in a way. And also just like there are so many trigger warnings. I'll list all the trigger warnings down below in the description box so you guys can um, see for yourself, engage for yourself if you think this is a book for you to read because like of all the trigger warnings that stood out to me, self-harm was one of them. It was honestly very brutal to read so I would actually be very careful um, going into this book. Do your research. So I thought I knew going into this book, I thought I would be okay and you know be okay with the brutality of it um, but holy shit I was not. There are so many things in this book that 
I do understand why people have a problem with this book as well. So I've seen a lot of reviews where they dislike the book because of how exploitative it is. Exploitive? Exploitative. Of how exploitative it is, of how exploitive it is, and sort of how it glorifies it in a way. Um, and that I actually can agree with and sort of understand because I can see a lot of readers being manipulated by a lot of the things that happen in this book just to feel a certain thing or a certain way. And I 100% agree with that because I feel like there's so much trauma that a person can go through and just reading about it, it was a lot. Not gonna lie, it was, it was a lot, even for me. Like I physically and mentally and spiritually aged. One of the main critiques that I've seen from a lot of people is that the storytelling is sort of like in a non-linear format. There's a lot of flashbacks. Basically this whole book um, revolves around flashbacks, past and present. You would be reading about a little snippet of a character's life and then all of a sudden it would go like back into the past in 10 pages, 10 to 15 pages explaining what they did and what they said in the past. That sort of is relevant in the present, if you will. I can see a lot of readers losing patience over this sort of like story format and I did at first, but then I got used to it. I feel like the story format, like storytelling of flashbacks from going from point B to back to point A is really the best way the story can be told because you learn so much about these characters. You learn who they are and the relationships with themselves and with other people and it fits. And overall, I, I agree with the whole story format. One of my favorite things about this book are the um, relationships with some of the characters, their dynamic with each other. It's just so beautiful to read and unfold. I feel like I love books. I love reading books about books and reading books about friendships, like true raw peer friendships. To read about it, it's just sort of surreal. It's very rare and it doesn't exist for a lot of people. And to read about it, it's just sort of magical. If I had critiques for this book, honestly, there aren't a lot. I mean, this book isn't perfect, but I feel like a lot of it in its entirety was perfect to me. Anyway, this whole book is a is a giant mood. It was honestly beautiful at the same time. It's a unique and different book out there. And I think you do you, do what's best for you. If you do go into this book, I sort of recommend sort of taking frequent but short breaks. Don't take too long of a break because there's so much happening in this book, so much encompassing and everything. And the writing style can be a bit like pretentious. Like I agree, the writing style is sort of pretentious. Like there were so many phrases and sentences and words that just literally flew over my head. And I was just like, I didn't really understand that, but it's okay. I honestly can't tell you the last time I cried reading a book. I honestly can't remember. This one, this book, I cried. I cried like five times. I think the last book I cried in was probably Where the Red Fern Grows, but that was, that was like a millennia ago, you know? It made me feel things and I appreciate that. Let me know down in the comments below if you have read this book, what you guys think. That's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you guys all soon with a new video.